Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Even before the first commercial airplane flight in 1914, safety was the primary concern. Today, it remains a massive focus for airlines and aircraft engineers. After all, a lot can go wrong on the ground, in the air, and during landing. It's imperative that any passengers, crew members, and flight attendants be able to get out of the plane as quickly and safely as possible. Over the years, many methods and procedures have been developed for conducting commercial airline evacuations. However, among the most successful is the inflatable slide. Known as evacuation slides, these devices were first introduced in the 1960s. As with today's slides, early models were made of high-strength, fire-resistant fabric coated with a special material to help prevent punctures and tears. They are stored in compartments located above or below the plane's emergency exits and are designed to inflate in just a few seconds. This is accomplished via a pressurized cylinder filled with compressed air or nitrogen that deploys automatically whenever the door is opened. This allows passengers to safely and quickly exit the plane onto the tarmac or ground. All escape slides are painted gray, and there's a reason for that. It's actually a special gray paint which is reflective of heat. And of course, if there's a fire, you need to make sure that it can withstand it for a certain period of time so it doesn't melt in case there's an evacuation. As with any device that's being installed aboard an aircraft, evacuation slides are put through a number of tests to ensure they are able to perform as required in an emergency. The first of these tests is what's known as a floor test. This involves inflating the slide in a closed facility or testing area. Engineers and repair technicians will typically stand by to observe the inflation and ensure the design functions as intended. Airlines also perform frequent tests of their escape slides. Planes are not the only vehicles to benefit from inflatable evacuation technology. For decades, boats of all sizes have carried inflatable rafts. However, taking a cue from the technology used aboard aircraft, some larger boats are now equipped with deployable slide and raft devices capable of inflating in just a few seconds. Like the aircraft models, 
These devices are attached to emergency egress doors located on the side of the ship. Once the door is opened, personnel can pull a lever to initiate life raft deployment. The result is a slide that leads directly from the egress point to a large raft capable of holding dozens of people. While they would certainly be effective at saving lives in the event of an emergency, these slide and raft combinations represent a fundamental approach to ship evacuation. The company, Servitec Sea Haven, has developed a specialized type of inflatable lifeboat that actually functions as a miniature ship. Each model is made with durable materials similar to those in the slides, but with reinforcements in full to provide extra stability. Perhaps most important of all is the ballast system, which helps keep the lifeboat upright even in rough waters. Not every rescue situation involves evacuation from a boat. In cases where someone falls overboard or a boat encounters another vessel needing assistance, having quick access to a fast-moving boat is imperative. Companies like Zodiac Mill Pro International have worked hard to manufacture these types of boats. Similar to rigid hull boats, these vessels are made of reinforced PVC, hypalon, or polyurethane, and are designed to withstand extreme conditions. They are typically powered by an outboard motor and come in various sizes and types. What makes them so important is the ease with which they can be transported and launched in just a few minutes. Of course, the boats can also be stored pre-inflated to speed up rescue time further. After all, as they are mostly air, a team of two to three people can easily deploy a pre-inflated model. Though lifeboats, life rafts, and rescue boats have indeed become more advanced over the years, that doesn't mean one can't survive in a more traditional inflatable life raft. While small and lacking power, these highly portable rafts can keep one alive for weeks if properly supplied. And their bright colors make it much more likely that the Coast Guard or other search and rescue organizations will find the occupant. In short, when encountering an incident at sea, the best course of action is to evacuate in any safe way possible, regardless of how advanced the lifeboat might be.
As imperative as inflatable lifeboats are, they really only exist because ships and ocean installations are concerned about space. When space is not an issue, massive crews and cargo ship operators prefer a more traditional type of boat. Cruise ships can carry thousands of people at a time. If something were to go wrong on board, all those people would need to be guaranteed a safe exit from the ship. Companies worldwide have spent millions of dollars designing the perfect evacuation boat. These need to be large enough to accommodate as many passengers as possible, be able to disembark from the host ship quickly, and be equipped with engines, food, water, and other facilities to keep evacuees alive for as long as possible. There are dozens of unique designs out there, but perhaps the most impressive is the Freefall lifeboat from the Dutch company Verhoef. They are fully enclosed, so they can be dropped bow first into the water and immediately begin traveling at their own power once they are full. Their high buoyancy design transfers the energy from this fall into forward propulsion so the lifeboat will already be safely away from the ship before it turns on its engines. As lifeboats become more and more advanced, technology is finding new ways to make boats, in general, safer. If done right, this might help alleviate the need for lifeboats in the future. Perhaps the best example of this can be seen in Icelandic company Rafnar Maritime's self-riding boats. Rafnar manufactures vessels with advanced hull and buoyancy technology to ensure the boat remains upright and stable even in the most extreme conditions. The hull boasts a very deep V section, slowly transitioning into a flat bottom. This provides great stability and maneuverability. It also helps the self-riding mechanism more easily flip the boat back over in the event of a capsize. Since the bridge is self-contained, passengers and the pilot will only be mildly inconvenienced by the event. Of course, Rafnar Maritime is not the only company employing this sort of technology. The RNLI, or Royal National Lifeboat, also utilizes special self-riding rescue boats. Though the technology has a long way to go, it may not be long before boating becomes safer and more secure than ever before. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.